Well, the guys were doing some lacing in on the columns that are going to be joining into the house uh, just to the first floor, but I guess they say uh, you really don't need a Hummer to go to Kmart, but this is, uh, when done, going to be quite a strong cistern. Hey guys, I'm going to pass this over to Jose here because uh, we just are getting some steel in the cistern and uh, he's uh, kind of elaborating how strong this is going to be, but in words that he can't say on camera. So I'm going to pass it on. Jose, briefly, just fill us in about how these things are done because this is so different than construction in Canada. All right, this is going to be the cistern. We're going to pour 20 centimeters of concrete right here and this is a column 8 rebars of 3 quarter of an inch to support the, 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 the weight of the roof and, and the house. There's going to be a couple of more columns like that going up to the second floor. So 20 inches of uh, concrete plus the two layer of the finishing inside and that's going to be the cistern. Excellent. And that would be like kind of uh, as strong as a bank vault kind of thing. It will be one only structure in steel and concrete. And two of the columns go to the second floor and one, the one that's there is going to be going to the foundation on the first floor. Exactly. Okay, I got you. It will be all linked as one body. So this thing, when it's done, is actually going to be one piece. The house and the sister, everything will be one piece. Yes. Wow. Okay, thanks a lot, Keiko. And we appreciate you explaining it step by step because it helps uh, foreigners that aren't used to this kind of... This is so different than how they do it in Canada and America. So it's the hands-on knowledge. Thanks a million. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, good morning. You're back here with old Barry, and uh, as you can see, they're prepping for the stem wall. And that noise in the background is a little little cement mixer there. And they're starting to pour in the foundation for the cistern, okay? The base foundation. So you guys saw this yesterday. See how they're doing this. This is all done by form. This thing is going to be a pillbox when it's done. So we sure don't kind of skimp on things in terms of, at least I'm not, in terms of making sure things are strong. That's a tremendous amount of steel. My Eskidos taking care of it. And we're going to be continuing with the stem wall. We ran a temporary water line for mixing the cement. Right there, 50 gallon drum, and we'll talk to you guys soon. All right, we're here about finished. Hey Keiko, how, how thick is that pad about in inches? It should be at least 10 inches. All right, so that's just, you know, uh, there's not much more to tell you about today because it, it was an all day thing. I showed you this morning how they wheelbarrow it in. And we're about 10 inch slab on all that laced and reinforced metal underneath so like I say uh, we'll show you when the walls are up yeah they're starting the base you can see all that rebar going into that wall and that base is all poured cement oh my god do they make things strong Keiko that's pretty strong for a wall it will be very strong yeah I I believe you on that one they got blocks piled in the back things are starting to take shape now you can see where the pads gonna be this is all good news Well, you can tell you know, more lacing and rebar on the top and uh, wow, it's looking good. Actually, they're laying out the uh, wood and stakes. I'll go by my Estro and my Mrs. and they're laying out the strips. So they'll be doing uh, according how uh, Keiko said, pl platea, so uh, the foundation, okay? And later on, uh, Keiko's gonna describe when we do our actual videos, he's gonna be describing some of the differences between better quality foundations or plateas and partial plateas, where they only dig into a certain part of the terrain. But I'm gonna let the expert fill you in because he's the one that told me and taught me all about it. 
Well, as the stem wall is starting to take shape, this is beautiful work. Nice and straight. And lots of cement in there. So you see, it now once for those of you that are not used to making rock walls like this, the actual strength of the wall is behind it, okay? The rocks are merely more of an applique, okay, for the look. They're not really, because the rebar and the cement is behind that, okay? So in other words, you, you wouldn't want to hit this with your car. You're going to leave a nasty mark. Okay, you can begin to see how all the fill is going to be supporting. They'll be commencing on the inside. You can see now the cement's up to the top through all that steel lacing and everything's capped on top now. So they're getting the final preparations. There's going to be a, a beam running across on the lateral protection like I mentioned earlier. So along with the wall and how the cistern's coming out and pretty soon we'll be at grade and above. So it's getting, it's a good time. It's exciting. Yeah, we're getting there now and uh, see how much higher the one more layer of block. You can see the block up top by itself. Then we're at grade level, okay? So that gives you, I took a couple of pictures that will give you an, an idea of this and we'll continue with that wall all the way to the entry gate, okay? It's what's above grade that's gonna be kind of nice and uh, a little bit uh, like uh, rustic uh, in terms of the uh, eventual fence, okay? This is just the stem wall and bracing for that. Okay, we're here now, uh, pretty, the cap will be going on. Uh, the cistern, of course the fine, fine, fine cement to make it all watertight will be going in, but back filling, the caliche has been filled on the house foundation and things are taking shape. Well, good morning, you're out here with old Barry. And the old campers out there, they're starting to flatten up. So the wet caliche becomes very pliable and it sets really nice when you wet it and then compact it. That's probably why they use it for the base of most of our highway in this country. Anyway, they're also uh, working in the cistern now, okay? Remember that giant steel column? That's now being filled with cement. Like I say, this thing should be exceptionally strong. You're starting to see the depth of it. This is a pretty good sized cistern, okay? But we are planning on adding a house a little bit later. They're continuing with the wall this morning and everything's on par. And well, they're doing a beautiful, beautiful job on that wall, which meets again to the cistern, which is now almost completely encapsulated but you get the gist of it now okay they'll be filling that in then from the front of the cistern to the reinforced cement wall with the stone then uh, capping it with a roof which is going to be part of one piece of the foundation so if you were to hoist this house out let's say theoretically like an engine out of a truck okay you'd be ripping out the cistern out of the ground too it's all going to be one piece okay that should make it quite strong All right, you're back here with Barry, and all these trenches you're seeing, they tampered down the uh, caliche for the main foundation, okay? But all these tracks you see and where these red lines, they're going to be digging them out about five inches more. So basically, this foundation, at least what we selected to do, is we're uh, approximately uh, six inches, but wherever there's a weight-bearing wall, there's another section, okay? Because it's going to be two-story. We added on... Uh, going down and so basically those areas are almost a foot thick on the foundation okay they backfilled the um, cistern almost completely so you can get a better idea which part will be under the garage pad and also uh, they filled the column with cement and the front wall has got quite a bit more done <laughs> 